Hello and welcome. It's Charles Folkart, November 26, 2019. Once again, I want to thank you for your support of this channel. I want to say hello to the 200 plus subscribers over there at BitChute. As a percentage of subscribers to views, I got a higher percentage of uh, viewers at BitChute than I do here at YouTube. So there is hope over there. So I do want to say thank you to those of you who watch this channel at BitChute. Uh, this video is on the Syrophoenician Canaanite non-Israelite woman of Mark 7 and Matthew 15. A lot of um, Christians, those who call themselves Christians, they don't understand, or and they're not being taught, but they don't understand, and most of them, let's be honest, they don't care. Most Christians could care less about what the Bible says. They're going to quote church as an entertainment um, a free, uh, not a free club, because you're expected to pay your uh, your your ten percent to the church after you pay your forty percent to the IRS. But I digress. Somebody accused me that of the, of that the other day. But um, it's all related, folks, and it's hard not to um, try to tie everything all in. But anyway, most Christians don't care about the Bible, and then. Um, uh, the, there's a lot of them who don't want to accept, you know, reality, truth is not an option, really. I mean, reality is not an option. We all are going to face reality. If some of us is being postponed a little longer than others. But when you face reality, um, because of your illusion, because of the contrast between the, the world that you think is the contrast between what really is the reality is going to be such a shock to you that you're probably going to uh, you're probably not going to make it okay but anyway there's another problem here is that and that's the pastor see the pastors really don't want you to learn how to study the bible for yourself they want you to think that they went to seminary and they spend their time in the Word of God, and therefore they know the Word of God, and that you should just listen to them. They're the one in authority. They're the ordained pastor with minor elders underneath him, and he's the one in control. Uh, nothing's going to get taught in that church that he doesn't approve of. Contrast that with the scriptural view, which is a group of elders who are recognized by the assembly, the called out ones, the ecclesia, they do nothing other than recognize those whom, those men whom the Holy Spirit has raised up. There isn't none, there's none of this appointment, official name, title, all of that. We're all, get this, some of you ego, ego pastors, we're all equal the head's not more important than the heart and the liver's not more important than the kidney etc let's go on with matthew chapter that's why people don't understand the word of god like they should they're depending on other men who are doing what they're doing for as the bible says filthy lucre's sake it all has to do with money let's get on to um mark Chapter 7, let's have Alexander Scorby read Mark chapter 7 to us, shall we? And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Zidon, and entered into an house, and would have no man know it. But he could not be hid, for a certain woman, whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him, and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, 
For this saying, go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. Okay, I thought we'd get this in context a little bit if we could. It says there in the verse that, uh, that the Lord and the disciples were in uh, Tyre and Sidon, or Sidon. And I wanted to point out that the tribe of Asher was um, provided this land and the, uh, this land here, the tribe of Zebulon and uh, Nap Naphtali, there, etc., Issachar. So, so the Lord Jesus gets away from the city of Jerusalem, which is way down right here. And he goes, he travels all the way up to this area over here somewhere. And I did a check, and it's about, hang in there, it's about 146 kilometers on the road or 91 miles. So I, I think there was a three or four day journey on horseback or mule or camel, whatever it was, to go from where they were down there to the big city. And apparently the Lord didn't like the big city because he didn't go there any more than he had to, apparently, mostly on feast days. So one has set that. So here we have, and this is the area, the ten tribes of Israel, the, the, uh, the, the, the kingdom of Israel, the Assyrians came in and took a lot of those people, those tribes, away into Assyria. And they, were, they never really came back. Other people then moved in. So we have a mix up there of different tribes. And that's where we pick it up in Mark chapter 7. So let's go back here to Mark chapter 7. And let's look at this a little deeper. One thing I would caution you is be careful when you see these headings. And this one says the Syrophoenician woman's faith. And I'm going to get into that in a minute if I don't forget. But uh, right now, I just want to draw your attention to a couple of things here. In verse 26, the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Now, with all the miracles going on and every all the feeding of the 5,000 and, and, the, and the making of the water and the wine and and all the healings he's done of the of the lepers and the blind men. This was a small little favor. She was this woman, a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. And we're going to look at that in a minute, what that means. That's important. That's is brought up for a reason for our instructions. And yet so many people want to ignore what this is saying. Let's go back here to Mark chapter 7, verse 26. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. This word here, Greek, I'll put it on the screen for you, a Grecian. Strong's confuses a lot of people because he puts in here, in parentheses, this is not a fact. This is just his opinion. That is non-Jewish. It should be non-Israelite. Non-Israelite. She's a non-Israelite woman. And that's the entire point that I want to make here. Let me move me out of the way. Um, a Syrophoenician woman, that is a female native of Phoenicia in Syria. Before we leave Mark 7, 26, let's have a look at this word here, nation. Nation. It's a kin. It's kindred. So this woman was a Syrophoenician or a Syrian woman by kin. That was her kin. She was not, again, she was not an Israelite. I mean, they go out of their way here to make it clear that she was not an Israelite. She was a Greek Syrophoenician woman by kin. You're asking, what's the point, Charles? The point is the woman is a non-Israelite woman. She's a woman of another race, of another tribe. I'm going to have us listen to Alexander Scorby read Matthew 15, the same account in Matthew that we had there in Mark chapter 7. Because he, he, Matthew 
provides um, a little more information for us, which I think, in fact, I know is important. So let's go have a listen to Alexander Scorby, shall we? Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Let's look at this a little closer here, verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Verse 23, this is the one you Judeo-Christians have so much trouble with, you. Everyone's included. All inclusive. Everyone is welcome. This is all inclusive. For a human being, we welcome you. We are all inclusive. Now, there is a group I'm going to ask you not to come, and that's if you're a hater. All you all-inclusive people, Christians, you got a problem here because the Lord Jesus answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. Now, can you just hear Peter? Peter's going, um, uh, uh, Lord, Lord. Please, she's been bothering us for the last several hours. She won't leave us alone. Uh, come on, Lord. It's just one girl. Her girl is sick. Remember the legions? A hundred into the swine and down the hill. This is only one percent. Can't you just, you know, you don't even have to go to her house. Just say the word and her daughter will be healed. Um, Lord, you know, please, can you, can you do that for us, please? And he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So she didn't get any help from his disciples. She didn't get any help yet from him, the master. Then came she herself and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. And I think another verse that says, Master, help me. But now he has to confront her because she's probably right there at his feet, holding on to his legs. And he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Now, uh, you Judeo-Christians, be careful here, because the Bible is teaching you that Jesus Christ, Yeshua, was not sent, but unto a particular group of people. And he tells this woman who's, now keep this in mind, he's probably at his feet, her little girl's homesick, or she's got evil spirits in her. She wants her daughter healed. She's calling him Lord. She's on her knees. She's worshiping him. She's asking for help. And he says, it is not meat to take the children's bread. And I would suggest in this case, the children are the Israelites. The Israelites are the lost sheep of the house of Israel that he mentions just in the verse previously. 
He, and then he calls her, oh my God, he calls her a dog, a dog. Go look up the other, other incidences that the word is used, that word dog. We're not talking about German Shepherd here. We're not talking about a Labrador. We're not talking about your favorite poodle, your little um, handheld. We're talking about a dog. And she said she didn't argue with her. She did not argue with the Lord. This is no time to argue with the one you're trying to get a favor from. It was a magnanimous gesture on his part that the Lord, that the master would even stoop and spend any time with her, talk with her at all. And yet he is. And she acknowledges that and says, truth, Lord, I'm a dog. She says, I'm a dog. I get it. I'm not one of the children. I'm not an Israelite. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall accidentally, folks. They're not placed there. They fall from their master's table. She's saying that, let me be a dog and get the crumbs that fall from your table as you provide for your children, your people. And Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. Let's go have a look at that word there, faith. A lot of people think, oh, she believes in Jesus. Oh, believe in Jesus, and you're saved. But that word here, faith, is not that kind of faith. Let's go have a look at that. So Matthew 15, 28, let's have a look at the word faith. It's G4102. And don't get me wrong here now. There's other lexicons you should and could be looking at. But this one tells you what this word actually means. That is persuasion or the moral conviction. Your persuasion. In other words, the way she presented herself in her argument to the Lord, the master of a different tribe, a different race, a different people had no obligation, no concern for this, these people at all. She's from Greece to the north. She probably migrated in. She was a Syrian woman. He says, you've persuaded me. And he goes ahead and grants her request. I'm going to put this in here as an insert because I, I, was, I watched it again <clears throat> to that point and I realized that some of you Judeo-Christians are going to refuse to accept at face value what you've just read. And you're going to say, Charles, that faith that that um, woman had, and I had one another woman in a comment. I'm going to get to that in a minute. She told me that she was a Gentile woman. So that Gentile woman, that non-Jewish woman, and you're, and you're all confused Judeo-Christian mind. You're all confused. You got the pastor telling you one thing and the people out there thinking another. And then you got some kook on a the little YouTube channel with less than 3,000 subscribers telling you something you've never heard before. And your brain's just going. Meh. So let's go have a look at that word again, faith, to support my argument even more. Back here at Ethord, and we're at G. Strong's G4102, the same word I put on the screen earlier, uh, persuasion, right there. So let's go have a look at this. From G G3982, primary verb, to convince by argument to or false. And that's all we need to look at it on that meeting there. Um, what what a lot of people don't get is that that exchange between that Syrophoenician woman of a different tribe that the Lord Jesus had no interest in whatsoever, as is obvious. In fact, he went so far as to call her a dog. That woman 
had enough in her to argue, to, to have a convincing argument with the Lord, the son of David, of a completely different tribe, so, so much so that she convinced him to go ahead and grant her her wish, despite the fact that he didn't want anything to do with her, folks. Now, why you can't see that, the reason you can't see that, and, and you should look at yourself. You should look inside once in a while and say, why am I resisting this? Why? It's obvious. He called her a dog, etc. Go back and read it again. Listen to it again. You're going to come to the conclusion that your thinking is wrong and you need to change your thinking. You need to repent or change your mind about this subject. In exchange between me and a female over on a video by Adam Green interviewing Pastor Chuck Baldwin, I made a comment there, and, and this is the reply. So what you're saying is that he, Chuck Baldwin, is not a racist cool. I respond, if you knew your Bible, you'd know Jesus Christ was a racist. Go read Matthew 15 and John 4 and compare how Christ dealt with the two women, one a non-Israelite and the other an Israelite woman. And then she comes back after she goes and, I guess, goes and reads that. And this is what she says about the woman in Matthew 15, which we just discussed. He was demonstrating the power of humility and faith to his disciples who had no respect for Gentiles or women. There are many scriptures proving that he came to save the whole world. And I say he was showing the power of humility by calling her a dog. He was showing respect by calling her a dog. And I say, laugh my head off. World in scripture doesn't mean the same today as it did 2,000 years ago. Did the whole world hear of the faith of the Romans as in Romans 1.8? Did the aboriginals hear of their faith? No wonder you're impressed with politician Baldwin. You're clueless. So she comes back 48 minutes ago. Charles Folkart, you can have the last word here, as I don't care to be continuously insulted by someone I don't even know. If I'm clueless, so are most respected Christian theologians throughout history. That's an appeal to authority, an appeal to tradition, a logical fallacy. So I'm in good company. See, there's that. Everyone else thinks this way. You're the only one who thinks like you do. I didn't say he was showing her respect. He was testing her because he knew that she would demonstrate humility and faith, which were lacking in his disciples who didn't want him talking to her in the first place. I mean, how in the world do you get that out of there? I don't know. And let's go on to see what she says about um, the world. Um, Paul was addressing the Romans in that letter to which you refer, so of course he would call them by name. I don't know. I mean, that the gospel was to be spread throughout the whole world, meaning the whole world. Have a night. So she's going to just believe what she believes no matter what. My question was, did the aboriginals hear of the faith of the Romans. She said the whole world. So that's what we're up against, folks. And that's why we're in the trouble, we're in the problem that we're in. We face, the Israelites face today. And you know what? She's a good example of uh, why women are to remain silent in the churches and why women used to not be able to vote.
By the current definition accepted by most people today, Jesus Christ was a racist because he did not want to help that woman. The, the disciples begged him, please make her go away. She's bothering us. And you just imagine how much noise she was making. And so finally he relented because of her argument. Yes, I'm a dog. I don't deserve, I don't deserve, I have no merit. There's no reason you should help me other than the fact that let me have some of the crumbs, some of the, some of the, the accidental uh, bits of crumbs that come off of the table of your, of you, the master, as you feed your children, as you help, as you provide for your children. You missionaries got a problem here. You missionaries got a big problem because you're wasting other people's money. You're wasting your time. You're not in the will of God. There's no reason for you to be trying to share the gospel with non-white people. You need to get your holy butts home. Get something done that, that's uh, important. Help your fellow Israelites. We're in a war. We're in a, we need you in the battle, and you're out running around all over the friggin' world with people that don't have anything to do with the gospel and the message of the Bible, Romans, etc. The whole it's not for non-Israelites. Thank you for the gospel is not for non-Israelites, folks. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting this channel. May the grace of God, our Father, the God of the Israelites. Who called this woman a dog? Yes, he called her a dog. May his grace be upon us all, for we most certainly need it. See ya. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour.